Good morning. I was just wondering whether you knew the three things that your brain needs to survive. Morning, Patrick here from Complete Health. And obviously one of the main things that chiropractors are looking at or trying to help is people, people's brains and nerve systems, as well as their musculoskeletal, or in a lot of chiropractics, we, we, we will call it the neuromusculoskeletal system. Why? Because the whole system is linked. The brain does not work without the muscles moving and the muscles do not work without the brain sending signals. And so this really kind of asks us the question, what three things does the brain need to survive long term? What things does it need to survive long term? So most people will probably be able to guess the first two, which is oxygen. The brain needs oxygen. And the other thing that the brain needs is glucose. And obviously, as far as I'm aware, most people watching this will be breathing whilst they watch it. They won't even think about it. Why? Because the body needs a constant stream of oxygen to be able to feed to our muscles, organs, and realistically, our brain. And so most of us will understand that when we have a stroke, this is essentially the blood supply being cut off to the brain. And therefore, brain tissue starts to become damaged. So obviously number one is oxygen. Number two is glucose. Now, a lot of people think that they would have to eat carbohydrates to get glucose, and this is not true. You can get glucose, your body can metabolize it from pretty much any fuel source, including fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So, so long as you are eating something each day, your brain can sustain glucose. Now the third one, the third thing that brains or brains need on a daily basis to be able to survive to be able to survive without cells becoming damaged is stimulation. Now, most stimulation comes from movement. And actually, when we look at that movement, specifically, 90% of stimulation going to your brain as far as movement and senses are concerned are coming from your spine. 90%. When we look at balance and coordination, roughly 90% of your balance and your coordination or knowing where your position is, is coming from your spine. And around the last 10% comes from your upper and lower limbs. And when we look at the, the upper and lower limbs, 90%, so 99% of your balance and coordination comes from these two areas, your spinal column and your ankle. Now, if we do not move, if we do not move, what starts to happen is our joints stop working the way that they were designed to do. And as a result, they stiffen up and we lose the movement. Now, if we lose the movement, and we've already just said that the movement was the thing that created stimulation in the brain, what happens to the brain? And why are we starting to see an increase in the problems within our health in society, including stuff like cancer, including stuff like diabetes, including stuff like neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's and dementia. And by the way, your brain controls every single organ and function within your body, including stuff like your memory, your senses, your ability to move, your organ control. So why do we not think about the master controller and making sure and keeping it as healthy as possible? Now, priorities, making sure you're breathing, obviously, making sure that you're getting adequate nutrient supply and food so that you've got the fuel source. But the thing that most people won't think about is trying to stimulate the brain. And like I say, something as simple as going out for a walk will use most of the muscles within your body and will start to move the majority of the joints, especially those big joints in the pelvis and the low back and the hips and the ankle and actually start to stimulate that brain so that the brain can maintain health. So when your chiropractor is looking at your spine and trying to get your spine moving, most of the reason why they're trying to do that is partly obviously they want to create good movement in your spine so that the spine moves freely and we can get our range of motion and the back pain and the neck pain and stuff can all go away. But the reality of why that changes is because we can start to see effects on the way that the brain starts to occur after adjustments. Now they have done ECGs where they will, well, actually an ECG is a cardiogram, so I would believe it's an E, 
NT, an electrical neurogram, uh, but they put scans onto the brain and actually looked at the brain activity of people whilst they're getting adjustments and post adjustments and looked at their brain activity. And when you adjust someone, what you'll see is the neurons in the brain fire up. It looks like a Christmas tree. It's like all the lights on the Christmas tree have just turned on when you deliver an adjustment to the spine. Why? Because when you deliver that adjustment to the spine, it excites the nerve endings and starts to send signals back up to the brain. So this is one of the concepts of why or how chiropractic works. We just need to understand in more detail how long these effects last and how strong those connections then become. But this is one of the theories or one of the concepts of why chiropractic works. It's by moving the spine, improving the brain function, we can actually start to get people to move and think and feel better because of the way that their nerves start to work. And it all comes from movement of the spine. So if you're sitting here watching this right now, and you've been sitting here for the last hour, the likelihood is, is you should get up and move around because that will be the best thing you can do for your brain. Patrick here from Complete Health, helping your body stay healthy, including your brain and your nerve system. I will speak to you guys again tomorrow. Take care for now.